Hey, what's going on everyone? Dave Hunt here with Crossrope. And today, I'm going to cover a couple tips for experienced jumpers to take their double unders to the next level. So I've seen a number of people that they can get through workouts, they can knock out and string together a good number of double unders, but there's still some room for improvement. And a lot of times they're, they're beyond the basics, but they still want to get that new PR, they want to jump faster, or they just want to be more consistent and string double unders together so that they're not having any misses during a workout. So a couple things that I want to go over, and the first one has to do with the jump rope sizing. So there's various conventions for what the right size rope is, and it does depend on the person and uh, their individual preferences. But let's say that I'm jumping with this length of rope. And I'm consistent. Every time I do a workout, I'm hitting all my jumps, I'm not missing anything, it's not tripping me up. That may mean that your technique has progressed to the level where you can take a couple inches off the length of your rope. Every couple inches that are taken off is going to somewhat notably increase the potential speed that you can rotate it. So make a small adjustment, just test it, take two or three inches off the length of the rope that you're using. This is actually the, uh, the new bolt set. So I'm going to reduce the length by about three inches. And if you haven't done this before, you'll be surprised how much of a difference you can tell in terms of the rotational speed. As long as you still feel comfortable and consistent when you're jumping, it's going to be more efficient, it's going to be faster, and there's really not going to be any uh, increased chance of a trip up unless you start noticing that it's clipping your feet or your arms are going wide and you fatigue. So take that into account, but it's one thing that you can try out because I've seen a lot of good athletes with ropes that are way, way, way too long. They're passing three feet over their head and it's just inefficient and slowing them down. The second thing that you can consider kind of takes a little bit of a different approach. And what happens when you're in the middle of a tough workout, especially if your upper body starts getting fatigued, is you have a reduced ability to feel the feedback on the rope. So what happens, maybe you've experienced this before, with a lighter rope, as you start to get into higher reps on your double unders, you start to lose a little bit of the feel, your arms start flaring out a little bit, and typically it leads to a miss. And if you're going through a workout quickly, you know that any miss is just seconds of valuable time, so you want to be consistent. Well actually, going to a slightly heavier rope, even though it weighs more, is something that you can consistently feel even when you're fatigued. So if you do have a heavier rope or you want to try it out, you might find that it's a little bit heavier, but you're going to have better feedback on it and there's going to be less likelihood that you're going to miss um, losing those valuable seconds. You can also consider doing the rope a little bit longer. I know that that kind of flies in contrast to one recommendation that I gave, but if you are tripping up, longer might help you just because of the fact that your arms may be flaring wider, and until you learn to maintain that efficient position, it's going to help you out. So, you can see as my arms started to go wider there, it's not the optimal thing to do, but if you're looking for consistency, it's something that you can try out if you feel like you're tripping up. All right, so the final tip that I have if you're an experienced jumper is to look in the mirror when you're jumping or have somebody else watch you. The reason why is because you may have an asymmetry. So an asymmetry basically means that one of your arms isn't doing the same action as the other arm. It can either be that one arm is rotating the rope while the other one is almost staying in place like an anchor. It can be that one arm is wider than the other arm. And then one arm can be higher or lower or further forward or further back. Now those are exaggerated examples, but I'd say in about 70% of even experienced jumpers that I've seen performing double unders, there's some sort of an asymmetry that ultimately is making them less efficient when they're jumping, and it usually means that they have to use a longer length of rope in order to get away with that inefficient technique based on the way that the rope is rotating around their body. So take a look, either in a mirror, on video, or have somebody watch you, and try to just make a small change if you see anything that's not symmetrical on both sides. So I hope that's helpful, the three tips. 
Consider shortening your rope if you are consistent, because the shorter rope will be faster and more efficient. Consider actually using a slightly heavier or slightly longer rope if you find that you're tripping up and you're having those misses that are causing you a lot of time. And if you have an asymmetry, make sure that you're trying to make those corrections to it so that ultimately you can get into the most efficient form and use the best length of rope for maximum speed and consistency. Hope that helps. If you know anybody else you think could make good use of these tips, go ahead and uh, share it with them and let me know if you've got any questions.